welcome back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry and this is Finish It Friday. Here we see what I have completed this week and what you have completed on your projects as well. So first of all, I want to tell you that I got the Pat Sloan's Ode to the National Parks block done for Block of Wednesday. If you're on uh, Facebook, you've already seen this, but this is our second block. If you remember, last week was this one, and now this one. So, still using the line Folk and Lore by Moda, and I'm really enjoying this project. I love this fabric. There's uh, several on Pat Sloan's Facebook group, which is Quilting with Quilt along with Pat Sloan if you want to join her group if you're not already and uh, you can see a whole bunch of different fabric lines all the fabric lines that people are using and they're posting their blocks out there so uh, there's a couple that are using uh, this that I've seen so far that are posted but I uh, really 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 like this fabric line folk and lore behind me I have the burgundy 16 patch done and I made some better pictures for you a little clip video clip and I'll insert that right here So this is a giant quilt. It is 79 by 109. It could be bigger, but <laughs> that's pretty big for me. I don't usually make them that big, especially that long. But I think I will be able to get this one on my long arm okay. And I would love, love to use some minky on the back out of this burgundy shade that's in here if I can find the right shade. Otherwise, I have no clue <laughs> what to put on the back of it. But I do want to use some minky, but it's going to be so heavy. It's already heavy. You know how it is when you have a quilt top with lots and lots of seams in it, and then you quilt it, and then you have minky, and then maybe batting inside of it. Can you imagine how heavy that will be? You don't have to put batting inside. It makes it a lighter quilt uh, to, to just leave the batting out if you want to do the, the minky on the back but I uh, just like the way it feels with the batting in it. It's just so nice and weighty. A weighted blanket, if you will, without adding anything metal to it. <laughs> I'm not sure what they put in weighted blankets, but there's something in there that's that's weighting it down. I thought it was uh, like washers, like metal washers or something. I don't know. I could be totally wrong about that. That is about all I did. I did have a request for some mug rugs and I got that finished and out to the person who wanted them. So I don't have pictures of that. Uh, they are in route and I uh, just kind of wanted that to be a little bit of a surprise. So I'm not going to show those this week. I do have a picture of them so maybe I'll show you on next week or something if I think about it. <laughs> I just got all of my scrappy 
squares out and just put some things together that looked fallish and got that on out to the person who wanted it. So I hope they will like the choices that I made. You just never know what people are, are going to like or not like, but I think she will be happy with them. Okay, let's get into your finishes this week. I'm looking around. I don't think I got into anything else. I did do some uh, fabric rolling and scrap processing, but not near as much this week as I have been. Um, yeah, I, I have... Uh, from the scrappy celebrations I've been going through that this is what I have left from my fabrics that I used for the scrappy celebration so I have a few full fat quarters and maybe one half yard and one one yard that I went ahead and put where they go but these are the actual scraps that are not in those sizes I need to put these I need to process these down into the smaller amounts and then I also have some strips that I've already cut out of that fabric. I'm hoping I can use this as my binding on that one. Um, I need seven strips and I have six and three quarter. I, I think I can somehow make that work even if I had to piece in some other color that's close. I don't know, I've never done that before. We'll see. I'll find something to go on that quilt. But we'll be talking about that this coming Wednesday. Uh, about finishing the Scrappy Celebration. If you didn't see this past week's Wednesday video, it was a shorty. It was the last three blocks and there were only six all together. So now's the time to really catch up if you're behind on that project. Because, uh, you know, next week is the end. And then we'll probably have a a week or so interim there before we start something else I also wanted to talk to you about um, the National Jelly Roll Day which is Saturday but I will leave that until after I see your finishes for this week so let's go over those we're gonna start with Cheryl uh, this uh, is her block for Pat Sloan's National Park. This was the, the first one. Uh, she's using Honey and Lavender by Deb Strain and Essex Yarn Dyed in Steel for the background. And she says, although in Canada we have provincial parks, it will be interesting to learn a bit about the national parks in the United States as all parks are beautiful example of creation. Really enjoy your videos, Cheryl from Canada. Thank you, Cheryl, for sending your finish in this week yes that is honey and lavender and i like your your grays that you're using in there both dark and light shades that's very very um pleasing to the eye i, I always say that i like uh gray yellow and charcoal and black together and that's kind of what this makes me think of but on a very soft level love that line your block turned out great. I can't wait to see your second one. Diane, uh, she said that uh, a friend's daughter sent me this fat quarter fabric as she has a new job and her life got more hectic. I used Villa Rosa pattern 1776 and added just a few fabrics of my own for the strip sets. Definitely colorful. Yeah, it is a very, very pretty uh, fat quarter set that you got there from her. So that was fortunate for you that uh, that was passed on to you. I love it. It seems to be um, animal themed, looks like. Uh, let's see, what did you say it was called? Oh, you don't have the name of the Fat Quarter line on here. I love this. And of course, a Villa Rosa pattern is goes together nice and simple and quick. Great. Oh, and she said that she, uh, she sent another photo of some um port pillows for cancer patients she says my husband and i belong to a couple service project clubs and this year they are focusing on cancer patients these are a few of the port pillows that i made this week another way of giving back good for you and your husband doing this nice simple project that you can make a lot up at a time 
and provide uh, those for those who need them. Very good. Michelle has a couple of quilts here. She has um, the first one we, that we see is in grays and browns and taupes in big squares. And this is from fabric donated from one of the Soya family in Nevada. Nevada. And it's made from leftovers from a layer cake and a small piece of yardage. Definitely a masculine quilt top. This one will probably get a border since it is a little smaller than most of the others. If I get the other three put together, I'll send pictures of those as well. Yeah, Michelle makes a lot of donation quilts. It's pretty much all she does. And uh, then the other one is really cute. Uh, it's um, kind of retro-ish looking. And she says, I call this one Back to the 60s. It measures 43 by 43. And you can see all those groovy fabrics there in between the white squares. I love that patchwork. Love that patchwork. Great job, Michelle. Becky. Becky says, uh, my brother and his spouse went to Hawaii and bought me four half yard pieces of Hawaiian fabrics. I found a pattern in the three yard quilt books that I was able to kind of use. I sort of changed it a little bit. I was able to make two tops. Not quilted yet, but I enjoyed making them. Wow, vi bright, vibrant colors of Hawaii. That was very nice of them to think of you, and I love what you've done with your, your fabrics there and your little uh, creative borders that you have at the top and bottom very good yeah and I see how you you know you framed the prints and it really lets them be the focus of the quilt I love quilts like that this one is from Sun Dyed Carol she says I finished two more donation quilts the quilt with the dark brown diamonds is 60 by 72 and made entirely with scraps I watched a video by Donna Jordan making this quilt and it looked super simple and it was the second quilt is also a donation quilt and is a twin size. It was also made with entirely scraps. And I'm happy to say that my brown beige scraps are all gone. <laughs> Good for you. They were both quilted in a loop-de-loop -loop pattern on my sit-down long arm. Good for you. Good for you. You eradicated those browns out of there. Although, like you said, it'd make a nice masculine uh, quilt as as well with the browns you didn't say that that was michelle's quilt but still i think they make two great masculine quilts with all the browns it, but it made me think of the the little piece of a uh, little scrap of uh, fairy frost that i found the other day and i was like i thought i eradicated this from my stash and then i found another i just yesterday found another one that was about a three and a half inch square which I don't even keep three and a half inch squares anymore. So <laughs> it keeps showing up. It keeps showing up. Very good, Carol. And then the last one is from Janice. And this is very cute. Uh, I bet you can guess that this is an Elizabeth Hartman pattern. And this was Janice's first. And it's called On the Farm. And I think the pig is awesome. Yes, the pig is awesome. <laughs> I like them all. I like all the figures on there. And the, the little marching rooster there, too. He's cute. And the horse or the donkey, whichever. I think that's a horse. Yeah, very cute. Very cute. And a goat. That's a goat right there beside the pig. That's a lot of fun. You did great on your quilt, Janice. Thanks for sending that in. Victoria sent in her, uh, I think it was March block a day, wasn't it? That we did um, from Pat Sloan. She said, had this jelly roll for quite a while. I wasn't sure what to use it for, but it really stood out with this pattern. I'm always running behind on the quilt alongs, but I like to go at my own pace. Absolutely go at your own pace, Victoria. So yeah, this was the um, March block a day, wasn't it? Or was it block Wednesday? I I've already forgotten, but it was from the jelly roll book. Actually, it's from this book I'm getting ready to show you. That quilt along that we did. Some of us did. I did it. And let's see if there's anything else here. Oh, look, an email just came in from Cheryl on her number two block. Yep, here's my number two from Pat Sloan's Ode to National Park, Size Matters. This one certainly had the correct name for me. It gave me a few problems getting that large HST the correct size. I need to follow directions better. Lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, those I had to get out my big, huge square ruler to get that right. I don't. For some reason, I don't have a 12-inch square ruler. I've only got like a 
I think it's 18 inches or something. It's huge. Now here's the picture. There it is. Yeah, that's a Lady of the Lake block. And it looks like you got it together just fine. And that'll go well with your other one that you showed us today. And then I have one from Kathy. This is a long runner. Five stars table runner. Pattern was from the Fat Quarter Shop. Fabric line is 30s Playtime by Lindsay McRae. And the stars were foundation paper piecing and time consuming, but not that hard. I'm pleased to have it turned out. Yes, that was in the Sew Sampler box, wasn't it? Isn't that the one? I still have it sitting over there to do. I've not done it yet. I may not do it. I may sell it or pass it along or do it as a giveaway or something. I'm not sure. Very good job. I would like to learn how to use those papers for that star, though. I've used papers for half square triangles before uh, years and years ago, before Fat Quarter Shop started using them. They had something called thangles, and it was like strips of paper where you made, I think you made two or three on a strip of, um, I think it was two, on a strip of thangles. But yeah, very good. I'm glad you got that project done, Kathy. Great. That's great. All right, that is all we have for this week. So I want to talk to you just for a second about Jelly Roll Day, which is tomorrow, Saturday, National Jelly Roll Day. Last year, I did I do a project, was that last year that I did that? center point or was it the year before i may not have done one last year i'm not sure i think i did center point last year didn't i i don't remember anyway go back on my videos for about this time you'll see you'll see what i did anyway you know we got this book from it's by it's so emma which is the publishing company of fat quarter shop we had to get that to do that so along and so it's jelly roll day tomorrow so why not pick one of these patterns and make one i think i'm going to make i remember when i was doing the sampler the jelly roll sampler that's what it was called i like the one on the cover i like that block that we did and here here's a more clear picture of it that block was was very fun and easy to make you can make those blocks in no time flat I almost showed you the pattern <laughs> so if you have this book get grab your pattern out of there and and do jelly roll I'm gonna see if I can get these cut today so that I can sew them all up tomorrow if my day goes the way it's supposed to we shall see I'm gonna open my jelly roll this is a jelly roll I've had for a long time I'm sure I got it at so yeah I think they were at some warehouse selling stuff and it's from tiny spool and company and it's called strawberry field it's not showing up very good let me take it apart so you can you can see it this is what I'm going to use and then it calls for four and a half yards four and a quarter yards of background so I have a here we go I have a five yard piece here so these are light kind of light there's there's a few colorful ones in here here's some reds and then there's also I want to say there's some purple ones purpley ones some lavender there's some pinks pinks in here and then there's some yellows these yellows are pretty i don't know if you can see that but they have pink on them here's a real pretty one look at that one i like that so anyway this is called strawberry fields so i'm going to use the oh look at this one I'm going to use this jelly roll and I'm going to use this ruby star speckled that has the gold in it can you see that has a little gold splatter in it and that's going to go great with this I wanted to do something with a dark background 
because the patterns in this book are, are there's so much negative space in there I wanted to use some more color but my jelly rolls just didn't lend itself to that so I decided to go with this light jelly roll and the gold speckle and I think it'll make a cute quilt I think that's what this is called speckled let me see maybe not maybe this isn't ruby star it sure does look like it I don't see it on the selvage oh. don't know what this is but it sure does look like ruby star speckled to me anyway yes these beautiful strawberry fields colors that's what I'm going to do I'm gonna get that cut out today hopefully and start sewing those blocks up tomorrow and it's just gonna to go together like that that's the hope all right I hope you are planning on doing a jelly roll project with me I will post my results <laughs> on the Facebook group on Saturday late so you can see how far I got hopefully I got done that's the idea right to make a, a quilt that day not necessarily you can you can take your own sweet time if you want to but just in honor of National Jelly Roll Day there's a there's a national day for everything isn't there all right so this coming Wednesday I wanted to mention that a little bit that's the end of our uh, sew along for the scrappy celebration so get ready to put your blocks together I'll have some tips and tricks for you on that to help you along the way we'll talk about borders if we want to add a border we'll talk about binding and backings and all the good things that has to do with finishing a quilt at least everything that I can share with you that I know about it and that works for me so tune in for that and then we'll be right back here on Friday of next week for another finish it Friday but before all of that come back here on Monday for Monday quilt chat all right have a great weekend get in your sewing room and sew a little bit each day if you can and I will see you soon Bye.